Hello, good evening and welcome to St Martin's Broadmain for evening prayer on Wednesday the 20th of February. If you're following in the Common Worship Daily Prayer book, you'll need to look up evening prayer on Wednesday at the beginning after prayer during the day. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. The song of God's descending, I shall read it for us. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and I cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and <coughs> coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> and so we turn to the back of the Red Book for our appointed psalmody this evening, and there are three numbers, 59, <coughs> 60, and 67. The first two have refrains with which we will open and close, the last doesn't. And we say the glory be before we return to the refrain. And we may use the prayers that follow in silence, we read by alternate verses, keeping a pause at the diamond. Psalms 59, 60, and 67. You, O God, are my strong tower. Rescue me from my enemies, O my God. Set me high above those that rise up against me. Save me from the evildoers, and from murderous foes deliver me. For see how they lie in wait for my soul, and the mighty stir up trouble against me. I will not fall at any fault in our sin of mine, O Lord. For no offence they run and prepare themselves for war. Rouse yourself, come to my aid, and see... For you are the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Awake and judge all the nations. Show no mercy to the evil traitors. They return at nightfall and snarl like dogs and prowl about the city. They pour out evil words with their mouths, swords on their lips. For who, they say, can hear us? But you laugh at them, O Lord. You hold all the nations in derision. 
For you, O oh my strength, will I watch. You, O oh God, are my strong tower. My God, in his steadfast <clears throat> love, will come to me. He will let me behold the downfall of my enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Send them reeling by their might, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sins of their mouth, for the words of their lips, let them be taken in their pride. For the cursing and falsehood they have uttered, consume them in wrath, consume them till they are no more. And they shall know that God rules in Jacob, and to the ends of the earth. And still they return at nightfall, and snarl like dogs, and prowl about the city. Though they forage for something to devour, and howl if they are not filled. Yet will I sing of your strength, and every morning praise your steadfast love. For you have been my stronghold, my refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, will I sing. For you, O oh God, are my refuge, my God of steadfast love. <coughs> Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. You, O oh God, are my strong tower. Restore us again, O God, our Saviour. O God, you have cast us off and broken us. You have been angry. Restore us to yourself again. You have shaken the earth and torn it apart. Heal its wounds, for it trembles. You have made your people drink bitter things. We reel from the deadly wine you have given us. You have made those who fear you flee, to escape from the rage of the bow. That your beloved may be delivered. Save us by your right hand and answer us. God has spoken in his holiness. I will triumph and divide shame and share out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet, and Judah my scepter. Moab shall be my washpot, over Edom will I cast my sandal. <coughs> Across Philistina will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? Will you no longer go forth with our troops? Grant us your help against the enemy. For earthly help is in vain. Through God will we do great acts, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Restore us again, O God, our Saviour. Psalm 67. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. <coughs> then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. World without end. Amen. And so to the Song of the Blessed back in evening prayer on Wednesday. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. And so to our first reading, Genesis 25, from 7. And then there's a bit of a gap between 12 and 18, but if you want to just keep going from 7 to 19, no, it's from 7 to the end, I guess that is, yeah. Are you happy to just do that, seven to the end? Abraham took another wife whose name was Kedar. She bore him Zimrah, Joachim, Medan, Medan, Isbank, Susha, Joachan, was the father of Sheba and Dedan, the sons of Dedan and Asher. Where are you reading? 25 from 7. Oh, from 7, okay. Yes. No, you started a bit before you. Yeah, yeah. This is the length of Abraham's yeah, life, 175 years. Abraham breathed his last and died, in a, a, died a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpeth, in the field of Ephron, son of Zur and Hittai east of Marm, the field that Abraham purchased for the, for, from the Hittites. Then Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After the death of Abraham, God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac settled at Beer Lehori. Those are the descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah's slave girl, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the son of sons of Ishmael, named in the order of their birth. Nebeth, the firstborn of Ishmael, and Kedar, Abdel, Mishbam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Timar, Jetur, Napish, and Kedma. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names. But their villages and their encampments were encampments, twelve princes according to their tribes. This is the length of the life of Ishmael, one hundred and thirty seven years. He breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people. They settled from Havla to Shur, which is opposite Egypt, in the direction of Assyria. He settled down alongside all his people. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethel and Aman of Padaran, sister of Laban and Aramin. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, 
and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebecca conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people born of you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Ezra. Afterwards his brother came out with his hand gripping Ezra's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she, when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Ezra was a skilful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man, living in tents. Isaac loved Ezra because he was fond of game, but Rebuka loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Ezra came in from the field and he was famished. Ezra said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore, he was called Edom. Jacob said, First sell me your birthright, Ezra said. I am about to die of what, you, of what use is a birthright to me. Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Ezra bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank, and rose, and went his way. Thus Ezra despised his birthright. Thank you. So the story begins with us being told that Abraham has died, leaving his two sons, and we've got a list of Ishmael's sons, and then uh, some information about Isaac, <coughs> and it's from Ishmael's sons that we get the Arabs and the Muslims in sort of uh, traditionally understood and uh, it's from Isaac and those sons that we get the Jewish race so we've got both a Arab and a Semite or Jew promised the land that they both live on today so the, the trouble if you like started <laughs> started right back there um, but in the, the version excluding the verses, we don't have the list of Ishmael's children, which you read, but I think it's good to have that thrown in. And then there's even more division coming up because we're told that Rebecca's uncomfortable in her pregnancy and there are two children, Esau and Jacob. And although we don't have much to do with the Edomites, they do pop up, Moab and Edom pop up in um, scripture. I think we had them in our... Yes, we had them in our psalm. Moab shall be my washpot over Edom will I cast my sandal. Uh, and then we've got uh, Jacob becomes Israel when he has the he wrestles with the um, human figure at the riverside. So Jacob becomes Israel, Esau becomes Edom. And uh, normally the firstborn gets the birthright, they inherit everything. So it was the same in our country until fairly recently where the firstborn got the manor, and the second one went into the church and the third went into the army. I think it was that way around. Um, and so it was there. Um, but uh, Esau is hunting, comes back hungry and uh, asks Jacob for some food that Jacob was cooking. Interesting that Jacob is cooking it, but he is, because it would have been the woman's preserve. So. You know, it's as if the writer is trying to show us Jacob as the, a sort of a, putting signs against him, a bit like if you watch the telly where you're watching a murder mystery, you know who the villain is going to be, you know, and they're, they're marking him out doing a woman's job so he's not to be trusted. And then he um, sells the birthright, so he, he says, I'll give you some food, but just let me inherit instead of you. And Esau gives up his right to receive the inheritance from his family, from God, just for a bit of food. And so that's a lesson to us, to get our priorities right. Um, so Jacob, this sort of supplant and usurper, 
when they're born, he comes out holding on to his brother's heel. Um, and then he gets his birthright, and uh, there's more to come. But uh, that's what we've got in our story so far. Second Timothy, then, our next reading, chapter 1, from 1 to 14. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me in his presence, but join with me in suffering for the gospel relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to our own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but, is, but it is now being revealed through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. As for this reason, I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in, in the faith and love of our Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Thank you. It's the opening of the second letter of Paul to Timothy, who he describes as his child, child in faith, probably, rather than child in, um, as it were, his own son. He encourages Timothy to kindle the gift of God. And we're told there that his grandmother and mother, by name Lois and Eunice, are women of faith. And I suspect they came to faith at kind of the same time because they, they wouldn't have come to faith and then raised him as a Christian. You know, the, the gospel was very new then, that understanding, that Christian understanding of the Jewish faith that Paul preaches is so very new. But it's in the family. And there's a very famous line. There are two famous lines. God has not given us a spirit of fear or cowardice, but a spirit of power, love and self-discipline. And he goes on to say... Paul to Timothy to live in the courage and the grace that God has given to us. He says there before the ages began but revealed now. Paul says that it's that gospel that he preaches and it's because he preaches that that he suffers as he does but not to be ashamed. And I should imagine if you were following a leader or a bishop or somebody and you found that they were imprisoned. It's not very good. Um, it doesn't very good for your self-esteem or theirs to follow somebody who's in prison. You know they're a criminal, effectively. But then that was the same with Jesus too, of course. But Paul encourages Timothy, nevertheless, despite his teacher himself being imprisoned, to continue. And then there's another famous line: "I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust." I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. So unlike, it's interesting to compare it, unlike to the letter to the Philippians where Paul 
says, yes, he's suffering, but continue to rejoice. As he writes to Paul, this leader is a slightly different tack. So he's clear that he is in prison, <clears throat> but nevertheless, he still needs to live and pray and speak the gospel, holding a standard of sound teaching that he's heard in faith and love. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you. And then he speaks again of the Holy Spirit, not being one of fear, but of power and love. And it's that Holy Spirit that will help him live out his life as leader of God's people in the grace and truth of Jesus. And so it's very really interesting that Paul is writing that in about power and strength of faith and the spirit, despite being constrained by his chains. And so perhaps we could take courage in our circumstances and lives where we feel constrained that God isn't. And we continue to be bold and strong in the spirit that God has given us. So should we go back to our red books for the responsory as we ask for God's direction and strength. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you and you hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Mary. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. Let us pray. Father, Son, Spirit, three in one. We look back over the day to search for those times where we have known your blessing and your presence, when we have felt fully alive, where we have rested, been creative, where we have spoken with family or friends or colleagues, <coughs> where our skills, talents, abilities, humour, personality have been a blessing to them and theirs to us. Where we have managed to get things done to our satisfaction and pleasure to that of others and they have been grateful and thankful and recognised us and our contribution. We thank you those moments where we have been aware of your presence, your direction, your word, your blessing. And we also look back over the day to call to mind those experiences for which we need your forgiveness and healing. Where we have let you, others and ourselves down. Where we have been frustrated. Our others understanding of us. Uh, we have had expectations of others that have not been fulfilled. Where perhaps technology or our bodies or some other circumstance have got in the way of us. Being the people we would have been, doing the things we would have done today.
And we are sorry where we have put others down, deliberately or inadvertently. And we pray that you would heal and restore us, our relationship with you and those we may have hurt. With open doors, we pray for Myanmar, the 18th most persecuting country for Christians. Radical Buddhist movements there continue to protect Buddhism as the country's national religion. The Christian converts, particularly from Buddhism, face intense pressure from society to recant their faith. We pray for courage and endurance in the face of persecution. With Christian aid, we pray for their partner in northern Syria, that they would continue to support and help women and young people have a better future through entrepreneurship training. We continue to pray for our government, for Theresa May, our cabinet, for parliament, and all you are continuing to work out our trading relationships and our rights to travel, security, environmental agreements and others with Europe and the other nations of the world as uh, those agreements and contracts are all likely to change in the next month or so. We pray a special blessing on those who are most likely to be negatively affected by those changes, inevitably the poorer, the marginalised, the voiceless, and indeed our most threatened wildlife. And we pray that those responsibilities will be understood keenly by those who make decisions on our behalf. With the Diocese of Salisbury cycle of prayer, we pray for Poole and North Bournemouth Deanery, for Lucy and Sue, the Rural Dean and Lay Chair. Thank you for the new clergy within the Deanery, and we pray that you grant them as a group of clergy and lay wisdom to work together to do new things to meet needs of their communities and to work with other church groups in Poole. And we pray for the Episcopal churches in South Sudan and Sudan. For Francis, Bishop of the Diocese of Rockon, and praying for peace for them. A true, grounded, sustainable agreement that all sides will honour. We pray that locals, those with power and authority in the international community, will work together for that and they'll be able to rebuild their lives of hope, peace, and joy, of family, of food production healthcare, education. And as we pray for the addresses in our village of West Knighton in this benefit, we extend those blessings to any places that we may be holding in our hearts. For Gabriel Cottages, Garden Close, Glebe Way, Hardy's Row, Highgate Lane, Knighton Wood, Lewell, Lewell Way, Little Main, Loscombe Lane, Oakwood, Stafford Close and West Knighton. We pray for those who live in those addresses who do not yet know you, that you will grant them faith. Those that do, that they will be salt and light in their communities. We pray for people whose life is going well, that they may turn to you in gratitude and to their neighbours with charity. Those for whom life is hard, that they may know your presence and the assistance of neighbours, professionals, volunteers to walk with them and to support them as far as they are able in their troubles. We pray for the businesses that are based in or serving those addresses. They will continue to thrive and prosper. And we ask your blessing on Vicky, Ben, Rachel, Brian, Steph, Peter, Seaton, Victoire, Anne, John, Arlo, David, Guy, Jan. Charlotte, Mike, Elizabeth, Graham, Tony and Andrea. 
and all others whose lives are hard at the moment through sickness, problems in relationship or with income, or for any other reason or circumstance. We thank you that you are our provider, and we pray that you will provide for them and give them patience, perseverance. We pray for those that walk with them, be they family, neighbours, friends, professionals, volunteers, that they too will know your presence, your desire to bless, and they will have the support and encouragement they need in their roles as supporters. And we thank you finally for all that was good in the lives of Sandy, John, Gareth, Linda, Derek, Thelma, Kenneth, and all others who have recently died through sickness, violence, accident, neglect, and those that have taken their own lives. I remember the family and friends, I think, of that young man found dead in the um, accommodation in Bournemouth, who'd taken his own life overnight. We remember those who served you here, all whose years mine fall at this time, and those we have known and loved but see no longer. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And we pray for all who mourn a death and a change in opportunities in life. That you will be for us and them the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.